good morning, my friends. Welcome on in. Welcome to another morning for guided meditation. My name is Michael, or you can call me Stolas. Either work. Either works. <clears throat> this morning we will, of course, do our normal twenty some minutes of meditation, and then we're going to be reading out of Ward Farns with the practicing Stoic within the learning section. It's a section all about learning. And that'll be fun. So before we start, make sure, as usual, make sure you're in a comfortable place. Uh, sitting upright and you've also at the top of the morning to your mirror. Top of the morning to your May. Um, if you need to, silence your phone or shut off the notifications on your computer and find a comfortable place to sit. Uh, highly, I highly discourage trying to drive or operate heavy machinery, heavy machinery while um, meditating. Not a great idea. So don't do that. So Maythwin, don't be operating that punch press Miro don't be like driving an 18 wheeler now pull over if you need to <laughs> this is this is not a multitasking multitasking stream all right um you're the dark overlord oh no gee. <laughs> well, all right. <coughs> Excuse me. Let's get started, shall we? Let's make sure you're sitting up straight. Sit up as if you're the best version of yourself. And... Pay a little attention to your body if you've got any joints that are kind of tense or bunched up. Be conscious about just letting them droop, letting them hang. If you need to, give your good shoulders or give your shoulders a good roll. And loosen up your brow and your neck. All right. When the meditation music starts, you'll notice it'll come in, and that is what you'll be focusing on. This is norm. This is just kind of ordinary guided meditation. There's nothing really fancy about this. We're not transcending any higher planes. This is really practicing the art of mindfulness and coming back to the present moment. That's all it is. Nothing more. Nothing terribly mystical, although it certainly can be. You can have a transcendent experience, and you can, um, as they say, get a a more cl clear viewing on your conscience, your consciousness, um, and that it exists on a level higher than your thoughts, but. I don't know. This is that's up for debate. <laughs> not here though. We're not debating here. We're just simply practicing mindfulness. <coughs> Excuse me. Um all right. And if you find focusing on the music is too difficult, uh, focus on your breathing. It's nice long, slow breathing in through your nose and out through your mouth. And on that note, let's get started, shall we? Let's get started. When you hear the music fade in, draw your attention to it. Let's close our eyes and prepare to meditate for the next 20 minutes.
right, you may gently let go of the meditation object. Our meditation is complete. Oh, that was lovely. That was lovely. Squirrel brain, squirrel brain as usual, but that's that's part of the process. We expect the squirrel brain. The squirrel brain is not uncommon. It, it is happens all the time. That's why we that's why we practice taming it into submission. So when you're in those moments when your brain just can't help but to go crazy and start going down rabbit holes and we have a much more we're much more likely to be able to wrangle that brain back in and get back into our present moment and try and practice being present in whatever moment you happen to be in. Um, and even those moments, we shouldn't even label them good or bad. They just are. They're, they're moments, and we can choose to try and just go through the moment and make the most of it, you know. I mean, shoot, that's what this entire book is about. <laughs> the obstacle is the way. It's like... When you have difficult circumstances, sometimes the way is through, and we can. And those circumstances aren't necessarily good or bad, or evil, or whatever. They just are. We ascribe that meaning to those events. That's that's where you get the good or bad. You you're ascribing some sort of value or response to an external. Well, we're going to be reading this section. And so the chapter 12 in this book is about learning. And we're going to be reading specifically about reviewing. All right. The Stoics offer many techniques for improving the quality of one's thinking. In other chapters, we have seen some of them, such as things in perspective or anticipation of the worst that might happen. But Stoicism also offers meta, te meta techniques, that is, techniques for getting better at the techniques. One of them is to set philosophical goals and keep track of progress in reaching them. Sounds like something I'm going to have to do. Epictetus writes, If you wish not to be quick to anger, don't feed your habit. Don't throw it fodder on which to grow. As a first step, keep quiet and count the days on which you didn't get angry. Quote, I used to get angry every day, and then every other day, then every third, then every fourth. If you can quit for 30 days, uh, make, a, make a sacrifice to God or to the universe, for the habit is loosened at first, then totally destroyed. A similar suggestion is nightly review of how the day went from a stoic standpoint Seneca writes the mind should be summoned every day to render an accounting Sextius used to do this at the end of the day when he had withdrawn to his nightly rest he would interrogate his own mind which of your wrongs did you correct today which fault did you resist in what way are you better? Anchor will leave off and be more moderate if it knows that it must each day come before a judge. Is there anything finer than this habit of searching through the entire day? When the light has been removed and my wife, long aware of my habit, has become silent, I scan the whole of my day and retrace all my deeds and words. Sextius was a Roman teacher of Stoic and Pythor Pyth 
Pythagorean philosophy who lived a generation before Seneca did. He founded a school in Rome, in Rome that was later run by his son, the son of Sexti. And that lasted from about 50 BC to 19 AD. We gather from Seneca's letters that he attended the school when he was young. Seneca kindly supplied a model of the daily accounting to oneself suggested above. Seneca also writes, See that you don't do that again. I'll pardon you this time. In that discussion, you spoke too, aggressive, uh, too aggressively. After this, don't get into arguments with ignorant people. If they've never learned, they don't want to learn. You criticize that one fellow more candidly than you should have. As a result, you didn't correct him. You just offended him. From here on out, watch out. Not so much th that what you're saying is true, but the person you're talking to can stand the truth. That is worth a reread right there. Think of all the people that we've ever tried to have conversations with and talk some sense into. See that you don't do that again. I'll pardon you this time. In that discussion, you spoke too aggressively. After this, don't get into arguments with ignorant people. If they've never learned, they don't want to learn. You criticize that one fellow more candidly than you should have. And as a result, you didn't correct him. You just offended him. From here on, watch out. Not so much that what you're saying is true, but that the person you're talking to can stand the truth. That's really good. I think of people I've had conversations with and they weren't ready to hear the truth. They had their one frame of view and it was gospel. This recommendation of daily review is sometimes described as Pytha Pythagorean. The advice here, Schopenhauer writes, the advice here given is on, a, is on par with a rule recommended by Pythagoras. To review every night before going to sleep what we have done during the day. To live at random in the in the hurly-burly of business or pleasure without ever reflecting upon the past, to go on as if it were pulling cotton out of the reel of life, is to have no clear idea, no clear idea of what we are about. And a person who lives in this state will have chaos in their emotions and certain confusion in their thoughts as is soon manifest by the abrupt and fragmentary character of the, their conversation, which becomes a kind of mincemeat. And the Stoics will engage in a reverse sort of review, preparation, oh. <laughs> excuse me, preparation for what is coming. Marcus Aurelius in Meditations writes, Begin the morning by saying to yourself, Today I will meet with the, bus, with the busybody, the ungrateful, the arrogant, with the deceitful, the envious, and the unsocial. All these things result from their not knowing what is good and what is evil. But I have seen the nature of the good, what is beautiful, and the nature of evil, and that it is ugly and the nature of him who does wrong and that he is akin to me. Not because he is from the same blood and seed, but because he partakes of the same mind and the same small bit of divinity. I cannot be injured by any of them because no one can involve me in anything ugly except myself. And how can I be angry with my kin or hateful toward them? That passage may be studied with profit by academic administrators. Seneca had offered a similar suggestion. The wise person is calm 
and even-handed in dealing with error. They are not the enemy of the mistaken, but corrects them. As they go forth each day, they will think, I will meet with many who have given themselves over to wine, many who have many who are lustful, many who are ungrateful or greedy, many who are driven by the madness of ambition. They will view all these things as kindly a way as a physician views the sick. And it's part of what we do for contemplation is you, you examine your day, you examine your thoughts, what what happened throughout the day, you go, well, I could have handled that better. And I even have those moments throughout the day. They don't just, you know, it's not something you have to do just at the end of the day. Like, uh, yesterday, I really, I had a moment, man. I flew off the handle because I was inconvenienced like a couple times in a row and like behind schedule on cooking dinner and I open up the refrigerator and the maple syrup comes flying out and the cap breaks and there's maple syrup splattered everywhere. I'm like, Rah! and it was not too long afterwards that I was like, all right, dude, you <laughs> don't get upset over this. This is stupid. It's it's brief and momentary. Yeah, you got to clean this shit up, but whatever. It's be willing to be constantly reflect on our dealings, on how we handle things, the things that we say, the things that we do. And be willing to see different perspectives and to shift, turn and look different ways. All right, well, we're going to end. And I'm going to take um, maybe about a half hour or so to just gather my thoughts, probably refresh my tea. And then we're going to continue on with where we were last night. We're um, working on some adding new pieces uh, from the Relay Station series, adding them to my performance repertoire. Uh, so there will be some good old-fashioned mixing and extracting things, as well as practicing some of the songs, a little bit of listening, all of the above. It's going to be fun. But thanks for joining me for Morning Meditation. I will be back in about a half hour or so, and we'll restart with studio sessions. Have a good night, everyone. Or have day, night, what? What? Shh. Have, <laughs> have a good day.